Welcome to the shooting show. This week, Liam Marsh attempts to fill the bags with bunnies with cameraman Stuart Wilson in tow. Liam, thanks for inviting. No problem, good to have you again. You've had a quick zero. Yes, we've been shooting very well. Yeah. So two to room five, so I'm assuming we're on rabbits. Yep, rabbits tonight on um, some of my permissions. Farmers having quite a lot of trouble, yep. so it's good to get them thinned down. And I can smell horse muck, so I'm assuming. Yeah, this it's is a, a paddock, this yeah. Um, horse sanctuary. Right, so, okay. And right. Um, obviously, horses and rabbits don't go together. No, right, okay. So. Just wait for sunshine job. to come out and then we'll yeah, typical, try and get a few foot pot, shall we? Typical Yorkshire weather. Right. It's um, it's always wet. <laughs> yeah. Should really be into wild fowling, but... <laughs> yeah, no, we'll be fine. Well, when the sun comes out, we'll, we'll get onto a few then. Yeah, we? should have a few tonight. Good, looking so. forward to it, mate. Our first recce reveals a couple of sunbathing rabbits. There'll be more where these came from, but they need to advance a couple more yards to get into a safe shooting zone. What's it look like there? I'm just looking up against the fence a little bit, but... Uh... Yeah, Here comes another. This is a pest control exercise, so all rabbits will be taken where possible. So, sportsman's element of to this evening, I reckon that you're on the gun until you miss one. Yep. And so far, I think you've done three or four so far? Four. To the minute. Okay. Um, so, as soon as you miss, I might get a chance. So, if your reputation precedes you like it, I think it does, I'm not going to be doing an awful lot of shooting, <laughs> so... We'll see. <laughs> we'll see how we get on. No problem. <laughs> It doesn't look like Stuart will get a go anytime soon. The rimfire is really on song in Liam's hands. After a quick gather up, the bottom corner is the next area to be targeted. Liam and Stuart get into position to wait for rabbits to come back out. Recharging the mags as necessary. Nice head shot, about 70 yard with 2 2. Cracking round. After one last gather up, we finalise the tally at 8. Now it's time for the guys to venture out to try their luck with the lamp. Thanks. 
did that little bit of pasture land. There's a little bit by the garden as well there. Yeah. I think we've got a total of uh, about eight up in it. Yeah. Okay. We've had some nice shots. I haven't had much chance on the gun because you keep hitting, which is a bit of a pain. Um, but hopefully I'll get a bit of a go uh, tonight. I'm going to switch yeah. over to the lamp. Um, yep. You've got a, a fancy, the... fancy gadget around your neck and other things. Yeah, we're on the thermal for <coughs> spotting. It's yeah. a Pulsar HD 38S. Yeah. Um, awesome piece of kit for spotting your rabbits. Yeah. And quarry with. I don't think I'd go out without it now. Yeah. So it's um, it's a valuable on? piece of kit. Yeah. And then lamp wise, what we're we going uh, with? We're going to be running a Nightmaster 800. Okay. In HD white. Yeah. And um, we'll see how we get on. The first rabbit under the lamp chooses to hide behind a clod of earth before making good his escape. There's a full moon with no cloud cover and very little wind. All that means that rabbits are extremely skittish. The guy switched the camera to IR in an effort to get some action on film. After we've crunched over the moonlit stubbles with little success, the grassy paddock beckons. Liam wastes no time getting back into his stride, but it's clear that this paddock will need another visit soon. been a long evening, yeah. started off quite nicely in the paddock, you shot like a demon. I didn't get a look in on the uh, miss one and uh, in my turn I think I ended up bagging one rabbit and kind of left the shooting to you so. Yeah it's unusual for me to use a 2-2, yeah. normally I use a 17 HMR but it's been good to try something different. It's sweet to shoot, it's been very accurate. Reasonable bag of rabbits here. Um, Z Z6. Performed. Crisp. Nice at Flawless. night time, is it? Yeah, yeah. On the lamp, very clear. Just with a little red dot popped on. Yeah, just straight on. Yeah. Just straight on back at eye, and as you can see, most of them were headshots. Yeah. Been a really difficult night, though. It, it has we, been um, um, this weather on L bike. It's been um, up and down. The wind dropped off. Yeah. The cloud cover went, so we were left with flat calm night with um, a, a blazing moon coming through at us and two big hulking figures trying to lurch through the night to sneak up on rabbits and you know bless our cotton socks we did our best but it has been a difficult night we've worked hard for the rabbits that we've had yeah i think if we'd have got here a bit earlier in daytime yeah we'd have um we've uh, we'd have got a real big bag but yeah that's due to this morning we had torrential downpour and then yeah obviously as day came out sunny yeah rabbits obviously wanted to feed they've had so, a merge but main thing is we've got near on 15 down yeah 15 less. Oh, we picked, we picked a shot of a dozen there, haven't we? Yeah, we've picked 11 there. I get the glorious last task of gutting these out and uh, skinning them off, and most of them will go into the pot, so I'm looking forward to having a bit of rabbit pie. Not that I need any more pies, but anyway. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. No Thanks problem. Very much, Good having you. Yeah. Liam wiping Stuart's eye in the rimfire shooting stakes there. And now, the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. This week, it's a special report from the Midland Game Fair at the weekend. 
This thriving fair attracted huge numbers of visitors and no shortage of big industry names. We roamed the grounds of Western Park to discover the hottest news. Our first stop of the weekend was the press call at the air arm stand. In front of a mass of Junos, they unveiled the RSN-70 air rifle. It's a special limited edition, only 71 have been made of these rifles. We're keeping number 71 back at the factory, the other 70 are there for retail sale. The idea has come from our founder, Bob Nichols, his uh, Bentley car that he had. So we went all out on the action and indeed on the stock to get the same colour, the, the paint for the car is for the rifle, also all the leather inlays um, as is in his Bentley. It's taken around about two years to get all the ideas and bits and pieces together on it. Or go to their local retailer uh, and, and ask if the if, uh, rifle is still available. They won't be around for long. From pellets to live fire rifles, Blazer's M12 Impact was brand new at the show. So far, the, the Mauser portfolio up until now was a little bit tame for the UK customers. We've got very technical shooters, very knowledgeable, shoot, knowledgeable shooters. The competition is quite stiff, so in terms of what people can get for their money, there's a lot of rifles out there that offer a lot of bang for the buck. And But now we can, again, we've got a proposition that, you know, these technical shooters or even long-range shooters can want, and we can offer that to them at a very, very sort of attractive price point with the M12 Max and the M12 Impact. The Impact, it's just, it was just basically down to sheer precision of the rifle. What we wanted was a, in the most common calibers in the UK, which is 243 and 38, those are our big sellers. But what I particularly wanted for the UK market was a simple, no-nonsense, practical hunting rifle. Sort of a, a rifle that answers all the questions, good trigger, great precision, lightweight, um, at a price point that people are willing to pay for for a Mauser, that was that was the remit, and out came the M12 Impact, and it's been very very successful. It's just a very handy, no nonsense rifle. There's not much glitz to it, it this, but I mean that that particular one, I was so taken by it that I just bought one because it just <laughs> that rifle just makes sense. Yeah. Um, so what sort of uh, retail price are we looking? Eleven hundred fifty pounds. Okay. Cool. 1150 pounds comes with the Picatinny rail so you've got all the mounting options that you could possibly ever want and the, the nice thing about the rifle is just the sheer confidence that we've got in it that this thing will do whatever you ask for it in a normal hunting context if not more this particular one again it's a serial production rifle uh, we zeroed it got it onto a thousand meter targets within three rounds you can't ask more of that of a rifle at that price point and on the shotgun side there were a couple of new Rosinis to tempt the punters we wanted to bring to the market a dedicated high game gun. So this one is quite appropriately called the Exmoor, whereas we know some of the finest high bird shoots in the country uh, are located. It's built on the already well-known RBEM, the round body EM action, with bold scroll engraving. Uh, but uh, the rest of it is designed specifically as a high bird gun. You've got a, a chunkier stock with a broader comb and a palm swell. It comes as standard with 32 inch barrels with a game rib and fixed chokes and half and three quarter choke. It will be available from stock, singles and pairs, and uh, we've already had great feedback on it. This gun starts off at 2995, so under three grand for what is ostensibly, and in reality, a gun punching above its weight. We have here the Competition 16, and it is a proper 16 gauge action. And senior, one of the few manufacturers in the world who can make a scale 16 bore action. And in this particular case, it is an absolutely dedicated clay busting gun. So you get a fully shaped sporting stock with a palm swell, nice angle on the pistol grip. This one has 30 inch barrels, ventilated rib. It's available with longer barrels if necessary. The Italians have stolen a march on this particular end of the market and they are making competitive 16 gauge loads for clay shooting. It's what we're trying to get sorted out for the UK and to encourage the UK loaders to make a 16 gauge competition cartridge, we've actually given them a 16 gauge competition gun in the hope that that will follow. We're already into the 
into the dedicated competition gun territory. So this is about £2,600. It's not a crazy price, uh, but it is, it's the sort of money that you should expect to pay for a gun of this type, quality and finish. Deer Hunter reported a non-stop weekend with huge amounts of interest. Their top seller was the Highland Jacket. It is very, very busy this year. It's a lot, lot of people and uh, very interested in the new Highland Jacket that I'm holding up here. It really is designed to be a smart jacket that you can wear on the peg. Um, it's got a good cartridge pocket, uh, double magnets, so it's up out the way, no, no fussy straps, hand warmer pockets. We've added some extra material in the back of the um, arm so the arm doesn't ride up as you, as you lift the shoe. A gusset around the pocket for, you know, um, good amount of cartridges in there. It does come with a hood, um, which zips on or zips off, however you want. Nicely lined, good colour, good fit. Just people are really, really liking it. There was lots going on at the Napier stand too, as they demonstrated one of their latest inventions. Uh, so this is this can be used in conjunction with the um, with the tree hugger um, or the or the apex auto click, and uh, the idea is that one man can lift much heavier um, animals than you would be able to otherwise. You can lift any animal really on it up to. Um, up to the, the biggest boar and, and fallow, you know, um, and if you wanted to, you could even have a roe or a muntjac on there. Yeah, so it's been safely tested up to 200 kilos. Um, I think it could probably hold more weight, but um, that's what we've tested it up to. Finally, we called on the NGO to find out who'd won the Frank Jenkins Memorial Trophy for Best Gamekeeping Student of the Year. When I first got the letter through in the post, I was very, very shocked. I didn't know I'd been entered for it. Um, yeah, it's a big sense of uh, achievement, really, because it's quite a national, national award, and I didn't think uh, I'd stand a chance of, of getting the trophy. Um, so, yeah, I was really, really pleased and really quite chuffed, actually, to, to be put forward and let alone win it. So, yeah. I was a full time student at Harper College, and uh, we went out uh, out shooting one day and sort of I ended up running the beating line. From there, um, I finished my all my assignments in uh, April and I, I started working on the shoot. I've now gone to become full-time gamekeeper at Hartbury. Um, there, sort of went from student to staff in June, moved into an accommodation up on site from the job and sort of took off from there really. We're in two weeks, three days, our first day, so yeah, it's quite nervous, but all the way through January, last days, the 1st of February, so pressure's on until then, so we've got a few ducks as well, so a bit of a mixed bag, but hopefully, hopefully we can pull through the season. We'll be back again at the Midland next year. Until then, that was the Shooting Show News. Well that's it for this week, thanks for watching, please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show.